Hello, my name is Linda McEnany, and welcome to my show. It all started on September 11th, 2001, when Jefferson City High School counselor Chris Jarbo wanted to show support for those individuals who served our country. It was a dramatic time for all of us. I know each of us, those of you in the audience, certainly us, know where we were on 9-11. Chris wanted to show that support, and so he began a process. I call it a process. He put together a group of, of students from Helias High School and Jefferson City High School, and they started an initiative called Leaf Relief. And from that initiative, this wonderful organization has, uh, has followed. It's Operation Bugle Boy, uh, and Chris is the president of this organization. It's non-for-profit and each year it celebrates many things mostly to do with those who serve our country and our community. So with me today is Chris, Chris Jarbo. Chris, thank you. Glad to be here, Linda. I appreciate your joining me. Well, and, and you know, I looked back, I, I read a lot of material that you had provided and that I remember and I was touched by everything that has come from this early effort of just putting some young people together to work for the community. So kind of tell, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and then talk about that inception. I'm a farm boy from Northeast Missouri, married my best friend and uh, was raised with a lot of love, grew up around a lot of, seems like every farmer around us was a World War I or a World War II veteran. and. Uh, on September the 11th, 2001, uh, early that morning, a student came into my office and, and told me what had happened. And uh, it took a while to sink in what, what that really meant. And uh, I remember that Sunday, that first Sunday after September the 11th, I was sitting in Mass at St. Peter's, and it was a very emotional Absolutely. day. I looked around and there were, there were tears running down people's cheeks and uh, I think that's where I got the eye it came to me well let's bring JC I was a counselor at Jefferson City High School let's bring JC and Helias together and let's let's put kids to work and because when people are working they're healthier and as a counselor I, I know a little bit about mental health and uh, I call Pete Atkins because I'm Chris Jarbo basically you know mm -hmm. a nobody and if, if this was going to be as successful as it, as, as, uh, it should be to raise money for the victims of the families of September 11th, we wanted, uh, we wanted uh, some, some umph. So I, I was really nervous when I called Coach Atkins because I'd never... And he, was he still coaching then? No, or? he, he, he had, had retired. He retired in, uh, in uh, May of 95. This okay. It was just a few years later. But, but he's I knew well that, known in the oh community. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I... Well known uh, where I was when I first uh, made his uh, acquaintance through the media, but I called Coach and I asked Coach if he would help support a project between Elias and JC uh, called Operation Leaf Relief, and he said he was in. And when when Coach said that, I knew the train had left the station. That's right. It's a wonderful. I, and that part I didn't know. I knew that I was familiar with Operation. Leaf Relief because it was a wonderful opportunity for the young people, for the organization, but also for those individuals in the community that didn't want to work on their leaves. So this was, yes. it was, it was, it was a, a, a win-win for everybody. Yes. That's right. You're, you mentioned it was almost as if God was talking to you then, saying, hey, here's something that you can do. And from this wonderful beginning, your organization, Operation Bugle Boy, has continued to grow each year. Let's talk about what's happening. Well, let's talk about the last couple of years because the last couple of years, you've had some outstanding uh, interaction with people, not only in our community, but outside the community as well. The, yes, Operation Leaf Relief evolved. That's right. And, uh, and you're very polite, you say, my or it's, it's the community's organization, Operation Bugle Boy. It's it, it's made up of many wonderful leaders, uh, wonderful people, uh, patriotic people, 
And the last two years, our annual uh, Veterans Appreciation Night, and that's been the major focus of Operation Bugle Boy. It's always the first Thursday of November, just before Veterans Day. Uh, we, 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 hold it, we have it at the St. Martin's uh, Knights of Columbus Hall. And uh, it's a wonderful event to invite 500 veterans and their guests, have a, have a great meal program served by kids, served by students. And two years ago, our, our, our keynote speakers were David Beamer, uh, who he was, and he was the main speaker, and also the Marines that saved the life, or Marine and Navy corpsmen that saved the life of Tyler Huffman, that we had flown in, kind of a reunion with Tyler Huffman, our local Marine that we built right. a house for. And that was a very, very special occasion. That was two years ago. Last year, we flew in the parents of the Navy SEALs who were killed during Operation Red Wings, the, parent, the mother of Michael Murphy, the, the parents of Matthew Axelson, and the parents of Danny Dietz. And uh, that, was, that was like being around royalty. Absolutely. And those veterans uh, really appreciate having the opportunity to meet, to meet Gold Star parents. Yes. You, you have a lot of partners in the community. And I think it's, you know, you mentioned Coach Atkins, and, and certainly he and his wife have been very involved. But you have a lot of partners. Talk about a few of those, and I, I know it's always hard to talk about a few, but tell us about some of the ones who are really with you in this initiative. Now, Linda, that's going down a treacherous road because there are hundreds of, of partners. You don't have a now if you don't have a beginning. I'd like to go back to the beginning, sure. the partners in the beginning. Sure. I mentioned Coach Atkins. Mm -hmm. Carl Vogel, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is number two, closely behind Pete Atkins and the influence he has had with our success. A very, very humble, great man. Um, even though I've never met him, I think Sam Cook, Central Bank, mm -hmm. I think Sam Cook's had an awful lot to do with our success. Uh, Mary Ann Chambers. Yes. Uh, she, worked, she was the director of the Red Cross for many, many years. And, uh, you know, uh, he's a now a senator, Mike Keough. At the time, he was just a regular guy uh, working on Mike Keough's uh, Ford. But, but uh, Mike Keough is very, very passionate about what we were doing back in 2001. And, uh, but local, all, many businesses got on board but those, those first folks that I mentioned, I think that they got the ball rolling and, and helped get other people on board to support us. And, and here we are today. Now today, here, here's the list of supporters. Shut your eyes and just point. <laughs> point, to a, point to a name. Anyone. All right, can you anyway. see? Where'd uh, you point? Where'd you right, point? Right okay. there. She pointed right here. Okay, you, look, you pointed to the name of Janice uh, well, I'll go to one I can pronounce. John and Mary Bollinger. John and Mary sure. Bollinger. John's a veteran. Every year, they have donated a nice check to Operation Bugle Boy. And this page of probably 300 uh, supporters, they're all very alike. They're just passionate about our veterans. They want to see kids and students involved in patriotic activities. And, and they want to see us keep going. Absolutely. And I think you mentioned the first group. And it was important to have those, what we know as community leaders, they certainly are community leaders in our community, to step forward. But that list of 300 may be just people who are neighbors or part of uh, church groups or people who, as you say, want to celebrate and recognize the sacrifice of not only those who have given their lives, but who continue to support us uh, in, in every avenue throughout the military. And uh, you've also added a group of those local f people, the firemen, the policemen, who serve us every single day. I think that's... That I, I think our veterans would be the first to, to say that particularly after September the 11th, our, uh, our uh, first responders are on the front lines. And uh, we, uh, that's right, that is, that's another part of our mission to support uh, our, our area first responders. I think these people endorse our mission. 
And our, our mission is, is really simple. Support our veterans, current and past. Help our communities, especially our youth, understand, try to appreciate their tremendous sacrifice, which is really hard to do, but we've got to keep doing that. Involve our community, especially our students, in patriotic community service. And thank our veterans. The best way to thank our veterans, and this is the message I give to our young people, is to continue to work hard to make this a country worthy of their sacrifice. And uh, that's so I important. think that's the best way to thank Absolutely. the veterans. You know, Bill uh, often speaks to young people, either through elementary schools, sometimes through the high school, mm -hmm. about his experiences uh, during World War II, I should say. Bill is my husband, Bill McEnany. Bill McEnany is right here. He was one of our <laughs> keynote speakers, at a, one of our right. Bugle Boys. But he is amazed sometimes at sometimes the lack of knowledge about World War II. And, and yet the interest, you know, these young people, they have an interest, they just may not have the knowledge or the history, the, the issue of history. And that's one of the reasons why I think this is such a wonderful opportunity in our community is because young people are involved with this organization and they appear and meet a lot of the veterans uh, at the events. So right here, I don't know if your camera can pick up at one of our events, uh, there's a student doing exactly what you're talking about, engaging in conversation with a, with a veteran. It looks like maybe a, maybe a Korean War veteran. That's Colby Thompson. Colby Thompson went into the Army about a year and a half after this picture was taken and has stayed in touch with you as well. Uh, yes, he Talking has. about his, his uh, memories and, and his feelings about conflict and war. So let's talk a little bit about this year. What's happening this year, first of all? I know you have some things going on right now, some letters from the schools, et cetera. And then let's talk about November. We start planning our, our events uh, a couple weeks after the first of the year. And this year, uh, our program really represents how much our past speakers have loved Jefferson City. Uh, Mr. David Beamer, the father of Todd Beamer, wants to come back. And by the way, we might mention that Todd Beamer is the young man who, during 911, uh, was on the airplane uh, over Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania and he's known for Let's Roll. Uh, very touching story. I, I was fortunate enough to hear his dad speak. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, thank you for saying that. Uh, uh, Mr. Bieber wants to bring his wife Peggy with him. Uh, the parents of those Navy SEALs, they fell in love with Jefferson City, and they're from all over the country, Cal the East Coast, the West Coast. Uh, we're gonna fly them back in. And uh, Colonel Jack Jackson, uh, uh, more of a local veteran mm -hmm. hero. Mm -hmm. He's going to be our keynote speaker. So we're going to have two programs this year. We're going to have our annual Veterans Appreciation Night. It's always the first Thursday of November at the St. Martin's Knights Columbus Hall. And Colonel Jackson will be the focal speaker. The next night, we're going to have a second program at the Concord Baptist Church. That's a Friday evening, November the 6th. And these, these people, these parents, these Gold Star parents, David Beamer, Colonel Jackson, they want to tip their hat to our local first responders, the men and women in law enforcement, the men and women in uh, medical emergency response, and also our firefighters. That's wonderful. It's gonna, that, that's going to be a great program. And that's an addition to this year. Right. It's not happened before. We're going to take a break right now. And when we come back, we're going to talk about not only these two wonderful events, but some of the other things that go on during the year. And we'll give you the opportunity to ask questions uh, via email, et cetera. Uh, so stay with us. We'll be right back.
morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me back. Hey, did you tell your parents about us? Let's skip first period together. Did you get all my texts? Is practice over yet? Where are you at? Are you with your friends? That's L-A-A-A-A-M-M-E-E. -E. Capital X, lowercase o, capital X, lowercase o. I love you. JK, I hate you. JK. Are you ignoring me? We're in a huge fight right now. Is this something I did? I can see your lights on. I'm coming this over. What'd joke. you dream about? Did me? 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 I'm lonely. Holla back. Holla back. Let's try something new. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. My guest today is Chris Jarbo. Chris is the president, that sounds very official, but he yeah. is the leader of Operation Bugle Boy, an organization that was established uh, many years ago, well, right after 9-11, 9-11. And he is a wonderful leader, not only of this organization, but our community as well. And I don't want to embarrass him, but He's a good friend, but he's a dynamic young man as well. Anyway, Chris, young man. Well, thank you, Linda. That's absolutely. for someone that's 60 years old. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you are a young man. Listen, um, first of all, again, thanks for joining me. And, and we were talking about the two events in November. Uh, the second event you said was at Concord Baptist. Right, 6.30 Friday, November the 6th. Okay. And that is an opportunity for people to come and celebrate, obviously, and recognize who? We want our community to show how we really feel about the men and women that protect and rescue us. And uh, those being our Firemen. firefighters, our, our law enforcement, and our emergency medical responders. And these, these speakers that I mentioned, Yes. Many of them have other children that are in these careers. David Beamer remembers September 11th very well. Right. And he has a very, very special place in his heart for first responders. I can imagine. And, and you know, these, as you mentioned, by the way, you're pretty good at this convention and visitor bureau um, non-role that you have because you mentioned these people keep wanting to come back to our community and celebrate with, not only with the, the volunteers and the veterans and those first responders, but also just with individuals in the community. They, these are people that when they say something, they mean it. They, they've been all over the world. The parents of, uh, of those Navy SEALs, they, they wish they weren't famous. Oh, absolutely. But they wrote, the, the book is written, the movie was made, and they're celebrities. And so they've had lots of opportunities to visit many communities. Uh, obviously, David Beamer as well. And, and the parents of the Navy SEAL said last year, their visit to Jefferson City, their sons were killed 10 years ago. Wow. That was the most positive experience they have had since their sons died. Wow. And David Beamer, when he found out those Navy SEALs were, were, parents were coming, uh, he, um, he definitely wanted to come and meet them too. Yeah. And like I said, bring his wife. That's wonderful. So isn't that a great endorsement Ab of Jefferson absolutely. City? Absolutely. And, and I think it speaks volume for the organization. And I'm talking about each year recognizing these individuals. You utilize, you mentioned, you utilize volunteers. What are some of the ways you utilize volunteers and do you need some volunteers because this is a good opportunity to make an appeal you know for people to help you well we we want uh, the greatest way for our volunteers to help is to do all they can to make the community aware of what's coming uh, we have a wonderful advisory board we average 50 people at every advisory board meeting 
and so we have we have some, a, a lot of wonderful volunteers right now. The uh, what, what, I can think of two big ways people can volunteer for for what's coming. When we on, at Operation Bugle Boys Veteran Night on uh, Thursday, November the 5th, at about 4 o'clock that afternoon, we're going to have six local World War II veterans at the Candlewood Suites. We're going to have limousines pick them up because this year, the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, we want a special theme to be honoring our greatest generation, all, all World War II veterans. Jeremy Amick is going to select six area World War II veterans to be these honorary guests. I would love to see people lining the highway, Amazonas to the, the roads going to St. Martin's, waving American flags, and give these World War II vet veterans the hero treatment that they've earned. That's wonderful. And when they're waving their flags for these six men and women, they're waving those flags for all World War II veterans. That could be the biggest way I think people can volunteer. A second way, the next night, the, the night for the first responders, I don't know that your camera can pick that up, but we've had this stationery made. It's called Tribute to Heroes. We want thousands of letters written by people in our community, by students in our area. We want letters of appreciation and gratitude, thank you letters, written to our area law enforcement officers, our area firefighters, and our area emergency medical responders. And we'd like to get thousands of letters to them by Christmas Eve. That's wonderful. That's a, and that's an easy, not an easy, but that's a, a wonderful opportunity because we all are thankful for the jobs these people do. But this is a good way to show it. So. Uh, we're going to, in fact, this is a good time perhaps to mention how people can get in touch with you, Chris. If I can find my information right here. I'm sure it's right here somewhere. Or I can give but, it to you. All right, why don't you just, what is your phone number? My phone number is 573-896-8857. Are you going to ask, ask me my email too? Absolutely. It's Chris, C-H-R-I-S-K. K C H R I S K A Y, my best friend, dot Jarbo, J A R B O E, the at sign, Outlook dot com. And we'll repeat that once again before we finish. Chris, you take a lot of pride in the climate and the culture of Operation Eagle Boy. What do you think makes this organization so unique? That's a great question, but I want to let you know that that we we know in, in Operation Bugle Boy that uh, compared to the VFW or the American Legion or the Marine Corps League or even the Elks Club or the Eagles Club, et cetera, you know they're up here and we're we're, we're way down here. What makes what makes maybe us a little unique? What we're proud about is we we want to be humble. We want to be genuine, and we want to feel privileged. So the people who work in Operation Bugle Boy tend to be a very low profile. So this television interview kind of goes against our grain. So I'll take probably some, some teasing about this. Because we, we, like to, we, we don't like to, we have to keep the focus on the people that we're honoring. Right. And I, I'm not going to, my wife told me to stay positive today, so I'm going to stay positive. But uh, there are folks that uh, do things for themselves and not for the mission, and we, we want to make sure right. that we, we do it for the mission. And I think the other thing that makes, certainly makes you unique, this organization unique, is your involvement with young people. I keep coming back to that, how very important that is. And I'm going to repeat uh, Chris's information one more time. You can call him. Uh, his his uh, phone number is area code 573-896-8857. Or you can email Chris at chrisk.jarbo at outlook.com. That's 
C-H-R-I-S-K-A-Y dot J-A-R-B-O-E at Outlook.com. I encourage you to do that. I encourage you, if you have questions, get in touch with Chris and, uh, you know, be a partner to this wonderful organization that he is uh, a part of. I won't say you're the leader, even though you are the leader. We only have a, a couple of minutes here. One last appeal. Is there anything that you would like the audience to know? I am so glad that you talked about the importance of the students. Uh, now that I'm not the, the guidance counselor at Jefferson City High School, I retired you know, a couple of years ago, I get to work with, with several of our area high schools. And uh, though our organization is about the veterans and first responders, but close behind it's about our, it's about our young people and getting them involved and helping to develop the kinds of values that we honestly believe we need to see more of. And it, the, the stories, the, the experiences that we have had with our students have just been really heartwarming. Absolutely. And, and another thing, you wanted to ask me where can people get the stationery? You wanted to ask me that, didn't you, Linda? Absolutely. You can get this stationery <laughs> at the four businesses that's paying for it. Okay. Schulte's Fresh Foods. Okay. hy -Vee, Okay. Moser's. All right. And Echo Water Systems. The, the stationery will be available on September the 11th. That's wonderful. At these businesses or by contacting me. Yeah. And if, if any of that, uh, you're not familiar with any of those locations, and I, I'm sure you are, because those are three very good grocery stores in our community, in addition to Mr. Melt Meltzer mm -hmm. and his Echo Water, uh, be a partner to this initiative. Chris, thank you again for well, appearing. You, but Linda. more importantly, thank you. God bless you for what you're doing. And my best to Kay, would you tell and her? Would you please tell Bill hi for me? I'll do it. All right. We look forward to seeing you next time. God bless, and thank you for joining us. Good night.